emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Shut up and sit down. And a gang calling here, Festa 67's workshop, and welcome to part nine of the Mini Art 135th scale Soviet ball tank with winter ski. And today I'm going to be finishing this little diorama. And hopefully at the end we can get a nice reveal for you all. So the water's in and cured as you can see. Multiple layers went in and it was a fingers crossed moment. But it's gone in well. There's a poor fella there face down who succumbed to uh, getting a bash on the canister and falling in the water there. So let's try to make this a little bit more wintry. Now... I was going to put static grass and that on it at first, but I've kind of changed my mind a little bit and gone for perhaps a little bit of a, a few bushes, some, some congealed snow, gravel, that sort of thing, because it's right next to a river, and I don't think you'd get a nice big meadow right next to the river, so I've kind of had a little change of plan there, because it is a winter scene at the end of the day, so... I'm using a bit of the old AK snow texture, kindly donated by eModels. Uh, there are various range of all the textures and all the uh, weathering products up there. So have a look at uh, eModels.co.uk to have a look for these products that I'm using. And there'll also be a full list of everything that I've used on this build at the end of the video. So don't forget, folks, pop over and give them a visit share the love and they will hit you up for whatever you need so we're just going to randomly apply this snow texture in all the crooks and nannies around the dio just try and give it a little bit of character it's going to be a couple of layers of this going on because i want some to look older than the other snow so i'll let this layer dry and then I'll come back at it and put an additional layer on and some texture and some bushes and things like that. But initially, we're just stippling this on all around in the places that snow would normally settle and linger about. And we'll put it around this fella's feet as well, like so. And then come along to the edge of the rock. And the tank is going to sit up in the, in the corner there between the two fellas, so going to be a bit there as well so we'll just come around there like so and I'm using a synthetic brush to do this texture um, just so that uh, I don't ruin me, me decent brushes basically so yeah I'll just stipple that in there you don't need a masses and masses of it I tend to do it in thin coats I'll put a layer down let it set, then put another layer down. Because it's like, you know, snow settles, then it? You get layer upon layer upon layer. So that's what I'm going to do with this. So I'll just slaver it on all around, the, all around the nooks and crannies, around the fellas there. Just spin it around and start working my way across this side. Building it up bit by bit and by bit. And some of the underlying ground colour will show through, which is good because, you know, where the snow started to thaw out, you, you kind of, uh, yeah, you just want that re realism, that's the word. So we'll just carry on into this corner and then we'll work our way along to the other chap. Like that. Bum, ba -da -dum, bum, bum. Like so. That's a nice, goodly little bit of texture on there. And I tend to leave this 24 hours to dry between coats. But that is beginning to look quite wintry. Yeah, I know. And then we'll come along the edge of the water there as well with a little bit of ice that's developed and I'll probably put a slavering across the top of the uh, the river as well, the water. So it looks like it's got a little frozen layer on there. We'll see. We'll see how it looks. I'll do a bit on the edges first just to check. If I like the look of it, 
and then I'll keep it. So let's have a little looky loo in a mo. Tap that down. There we go. And as Ted would say, slap it all in there. It'll be done. Come around the front of that rock. Yeah, I'm liking that. So that's 24 hours to set now. And it uh, seems to have done its job quite nicely. I'm quite pleased with that. And we'll just see whether or not we can put any bits and pieces on and start uh, putting a bit of variation on it. Probably dry brush along some of these rocks as well, just to give them a little bit of shadow and a bit of light. And then I'm going to go around that edge of the water with things like twig, dirt, detritus, old leaves and things that will go in there. Bit of winter texture across the tracks of, of the tank there. I've also got to do the weathering, the streaking and things, so all in all, there's, there's still a fair little bit to do to this, this bit. I'm just spinning it around just to try to to get me eye thinking where streaks would be and, and dust and rain marks and rust, that sort of thing. So it's very clean at the moment. So we can now attack it, I think. Give it a little bit more snow just to bring back some of the features now that it's dry. So we'll thicken it up in a few places. Like so. A little bit across there. And around there. Because I've got bushes to go on here as well, see. So I want them to look as if, you know, they've had a bit of snow around them and that. So. Just repeating the process that we've done before. There we go. And it just begins to build it up in different layers. A few of the thinner areas I'll leave. And then I'll do some of the areas that haven't been done. So you get different, different consistencies around the whole diorama. Stipple, 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 stipple. All the way around there. Oh, yeah. A little bit on that slope there. There we go. Now, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's it. Nice and fresh. And the layer I've already got down acts as almost like a key for this to bond to. A bit like size in a wall when you're wallpapering. You know, it just gives it that layer that now this can bond to and just thicken it up now. That's snowier than a snowy day there, isn't it? I think what? I want to make a snowball now. Work our way to the tank. Because obviously the snow under it started to fall because of the shadow, so the fresh stuff's just settled around it. Yeah. Oh. A little bit around the skis. Oh, look, it's coming together now. I'm on a roll. Work my way around there. As you can, you can get carried away with this. I now want to do snow on everything. But yeah, I'm liking it. A little bit round the rump there. Have you some of that. A little bit round on the edges of the skis where it snowed since the tank's been there. Because don't forget, this tank's been abandoned. See, these blokes have been walking through the woods and they found this tank sat there. The crew are dead. And, you know, you've got the Poor old bloke in the vault there, so they're scratching their heads at the moment, thinking, well, we've got this, I've got, got this bolt tank here, what are we going to do with it? So they're going to nick it. That's what they're going to do. They're going to acquire the bolt tank. So a little bit of snow on the top 
gun now. Why not? And then we can start putting some on the ridges of some of these tracks as well. So again, you know, it's just my little take on it. I don't proclaim to be a, an authority on dios or anything like that. It's just my little mind giving me some ideas on what I think will work on this diorama. There's a lot of diorama builders out there that are very intricate on what they do and, and, and rightly so. But it's just my little take on what I think works for this dio. Uh, feel free to add any, any tips for future reference, of course. You know, that's your privilege. But, uh, yeah, it's a little bit of snow build up on these ridges. Nothing too major, just a little bit, just so that it's there. Just drop it on there like so. A bit like dry brushing. I'm just flicking the brush across the edge of the, the ridge on the track, hoping that some snow just knocks off and collects on there. Just like that. There we go. And then do the same on the front edge. To about the waist where the guns are coming out of the front there because obviously it's not going to settle underneath because it can't sort of settle upside down, can it? So it's only going to be the leading edges towards the top of the tank that are going to have this on there. We'll leave that in. There you go. Just flick that across the top there. Give it a little bit of stippling so it looks like it's landed, started to fall and froze. There you go. A little bit more on that gun. And probably flick a little bit on the top edges of the two open hatches as well. Just so that that's got a bit of snow on it as well. Because it's going to be a surface that the snow would stick to, folks. So... That's what I'm going for. So we'll just flick a little bit around there, like have you a get of that, and then streak some of it down the front on the edges there, and then do the same on this little door there. And I'll probably do the same on the inside as well. There's a couple of raised surfaces, and obviously the wheel that is used to lock the hatches. So. I'll flick a little bit on them surfaces. Nothing too mad, but just a little trace of it. A little bit on them edges of that rock there, where it's uh, thawed, run down, and then refroze, like so. And then just flick a little bit on the inside there on the on the wheel and on the mechanism of the door and on the inner frame there, just like so. And I think it's beginning to come together quite nicely now. Let me go back over a couple of bits along the front there. And then just stipple now along the edges of the water just to give it that snow on the water surface look. And as it dries, it'll go a little bit transparent. But it gives the top of the water a texture to touch, you know. So that's all you're doing. Just creating that effect. There you go. Tiny little traces of it here, there, and everywhere. Uh, some areas slightly thicker than others, uh, but we don't want to lose track of the fella in the water there. So we'll leave a little bit where you can just glimpse him, just enough to catch your eye, and then you'll think, "Oh, what's under there then?" And you'll zoom in then and have a looky loo, won't you? Yes, Festa. Go. All around there. Just trying to highlight that edge. And then we'll have all the, the leaves, branches and things like that going in. So we'll let that uh, dry off there. And I think we'll get the weathering pencils out in a bit. And have a look at that. But all in all, all wisps, I think it's coming together nicely. Yeah, I like that. Yep. Right. So 
it's that time to dry. Da, 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 da. Yes, folks, the AK Weathering Pencil Set as bought from eModels. Look at that. 37 of the finest weathering pencils, all in one rather suave old looking box. So feel free to have a looky loo, folks, at them. They're a lovely set. Uh, I blame Ted totally. Uh, he got a couple of the, the smaller sets and I spotted them and I oh, I thought I'm gonna I'm gonna get a set, so yeah. And these are I'll just dip them I've got a glue holder there with a bit of water in. And I just dip the pencil in there, wet it up and then just run it along where I want. And then you do the same with a brush. And then you can basically drag the pigment down like I'm doing there. Almost as if you're doing a dot filter, and it just lets it follow the brush stroke. Don't need to go too mad. You can do as little and as much as you want with it. And if you make a mistake, a little bit of water on the brush, and you can wash it away. So yeah, they really are brilliant for this sort of work, folks. So if you haven't got any, nip over to emodels.co.uk. Go and grab yourself a set. You can also, like I say, get them in boxes of four and you can build yourself up gradually if you choose. But you've got all the different textures, colours, medium rust, light rust, you've got dirt, rain marks, streaking grime, so really, really, really good set of weathering pencils. So we'll just do a little bit of flickage there where mud's gone up the back. Because as the tank's been driving along with the rotation of the single track, it would throw mud up at uh, an angle up the back side of the tank there. So thanks to Sergeant Bones there uh, for that little tip because I did pick his brains on a few bits and, and inquired as to where he thought things would go because he's my resident armour expert. So cheers for that, Sarge. Brilliant tip, mate. Much appreciated. A bit of congealed mud inside some of these treads where it's been scooting along through dirt and detritus. And then obviously you're going to have rust streaks forming and, and things like that where it's been snowed on, rained on and things like that. So I can really go to town on this with these. And it's apply, get a brush, water it down just a touch. You don't want your brush soaking wet, just damp. And then you can just pull it around on the model where you want to. That's all we're trying to do at the end of the day. Apply a little bit of weathering to the model just to make it look a little more authentic. And it just gradually, layer by layer, builds this up. There you go. Drag that down like so. And then if you go too mad, you can just water it down, take it away. Like that. There you go. There you go. Put a little pad on there, see? And then I can remove any excess, see? And it just takes it back enough to please me eye. Go. I'll just do the same on here. A little bit of muck on there. Yeah, that's something. Again, it will just be spread a bit. Obviously not as harsh on the backside because it would have rolled through the snow. You see, the snow would have pulled some of the mud off with the rotation of the tyre. But then if he's reversed and gone forwards, then it'll pick it back up. So you're going to have pretty much an even, an even covering just here. But I'll put it on thick at first, and then I'll take off what I don't need. So it's just leaving a stain. Things like that. There you go. Take some of that off. Under there, like that. There, love it. All right, 
What could we wear now? Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. A bit of that in there. There's just little bits of rust forming, or rust spots that we can put and just drag down. Just where she's been uh, sitting there and a little bit of rust and detritus has formed. Some of the gun joins where the, the metal's bolted to the, to the hull of the tank. Just like little rain marks, a few rust streaks, that sort of thing. I think major, you know, it's only recently been been left so this is almost rust in service basically but it's not a totally abandoned barn fine 50 year old rusty car it's it's just tired it's a tired little bulk tank bless it yeah a bit round there Play. Uh, just try and put a little bit of rust around its ring there like that come just underneath starting from the middle working its way round and then I'll pull that down into the grassy area like so yeah. condensation and rain has just, just made it stain the surface do a bit around the door there try and get an even look to it And obviously around where the, the track joins the hull as well, there'll be rust forming stains and mud stains and go. Just to create that illusion. And I'm just softly just softly running the tip of the weathering pencil on the model there. And then add a little bit of water, press it on the uh, makeup pad that I've got on there, and then just run it in there like that. Add you a bit of that. Nice, isn't it? All right, let's have a look around this side, see what we can do around here. We'll have some of that on there, on that gun. Like that. Drag that towards the door frame. There we go. Uh, a little bit on that edge of the door there, the leading edge, where it's been slamming against the, the, the frame of the hole there. It would have chipped some of the paint off. And then obviously, with water and moisture, the rust would just start to form. Coming together quite well. I'm liking it. Drag that. Thin that down a tad. Wipe the excess water off of that pencil before I put it away. And we'll have some rain marks now. There you go. Bring them along around the edge of that. Like so. Draw it towards there. And it's it's trying to figure out where the water would run because obviously being a sphere, yeah, you know, water's going to sort of run around the edge of the track and down and round, but some, some of it when it hits the gun may run towards the door frame. So I was trying to second guess where moisture would accumulate and where it would roll. So This did result in me putting a, a small plastic ball in <laughs> in the sink and pouring a jug of water over it very gently just to see where water would run so i did a bit of research on it yeah i managed to create a complete and utter mess in the sink but i had fun doing it 
I really recommend it, but just tell your partner it's all part of the research. Just say Fester told you to do it. They'll understand. There you go. Oh, just make sure that that gun stays in place. There you go. Uh, I think we'll glue him in place now. Now that he's wobbled once, he won't wobble again. There you go. Right. Bit round this one. Round the top edge there. Like so. Drag that round. And that was the beauty of leaving the surface slightly flat white because I haven't put a gloss coat on it. And yeah, it's letting the pigment stain into the paint a little bit and it's giving quite a pleasant view to the eye. I'm hoping, really hoping that it's coming out on camera, but sitting here looking at this, it's, it's pleasant to see how it's actually staining into the paint. Quite pleased with that. Work some along the edges of this track now. And then just drag it around where you think it would run. It's pretty much along the track. It's a bit like capillary reaction with extra thin, isn't it? So I'm just trying to guess on the real thing where it would go. Wouldn't it be brilliant if they did make these tanks? Oh, I'd love a go in one. I think they did the gyro wheel a few years back, didn't they? Back in the 50s and that, which was like a big tractor tyre with a bloke sat in a little seat that was in the middle of it. But ball tank would be absolute brilliant. Go a little bit more on the tracks there. Bring it down. Come around the edge of the door. And then work my way along the front. Right. I think it's time now to put some scenery in. So we got dirt, ground scatter, leaves, twigs, that sort of stuff. Got a bit of grass, got some bushes, uh, some shrubs and things of that nature. So, folks, I think we can have a little bit of fun now. So it's out with a PVA. Give that a stir with me plastic stirry thing of goodness and greatness and all of that. And we can start adding a little bit of scenery. I'm going to start with the edge of the water. I'm going to come round there with a nice line of PVA. Just like that. Right along where the edge of the water is touching the rocks. Probably about five mil wide. Open up my bag of detritus. Try and give it a shake to get more of the dust out because it's dust I want to get down first. And then some of the bigger stuff I can then press into the, the PVA. So that's what we're going to do. So in true Blue Peter style, instead of using an applicator, let's get our fingers mucky. There you go, look at that. Just work it along there. So it's almost like the water as it's run along it's just washed some of this stuff into the side and then once it's dry i can dust off and remove whatever i don't want or left in there so i've got a few going in the little nooks and depths of the rocks there so scatter some of it along these edges and then we can have a bit of bit of dirt bit of detritus and then when the bushes go on top of that it just looks like nature yeah, I know. Scary, eh? We can do this, folks. So we'll drop a little bit round here. Of the PVA. Get some ground scatter on there. Because don't forget, well, you know, there's layers. So once this is down, I can then come back, if needed, with another additional layer of snow and try and blend it in. So bear with me, folks, on this. A little bit iggledy piggledy, but yeah. So we'll just brush some of this loose stuff away now. And then we'll be able to get that off 
and back into the bag because waste not want up and all of that. So we'll just brush this around now. There you go. And, uh, that's how the dust off. Right, got my tweezers out, a little bit of PVA on the bottom edge of the bush there. And we can drop that in place. And this is the wobbly stage of the build because you start putting stuff on and it moves around. But don't forget, the PVA needs to go off. So once it's gone off, it will bond. But uh, you can use hot glue as well. Uh, it's just I uh, yeah, didn't fancy the mess with hot glue today. So I went with a bit of PVA. And I'm just pressing the bushes roughly where I think they would be. Some under the shade there, some out on the edges. Yeah. I'm just generally putting them where I think they would grow, basically. So water would run down this edge of the rock there along the edge, so it'll probably accumulate some dirt, silt, and goodness. The so stuff would probably grow in there. I'll work my way around there. Press them up into there. Like so. Right. Wheedle me way around. bushes in there and already she's beginning to come alive you know and this for me is is that stage where when you start the build you know a bit like I did with this one I, I kind of had in my mind what I wanted and then it was getting it there so it's a nice little journey when you when you do these builds and dare I say, it gives the ball tank a little vignette or diode to sit on and just, yeah, tells its story, doesn't it? Doesn't have to be too mad. You know, it's just a simple, basic diorama, this. It's achievable by, a, you know, any of your viewing. You know, you've, you've got the skills. You've seen how it's done. You've seen the, the materials used. So have a go if you've never done a diorama. This is a real basic entry level diorama that the majority of you will be able to achieve without a problem. Give it a go. We only learn in this hobby by doing, and you can get all these supplies at eModels. You know, so have a crack at it, folks. Yes, the bowl of goodness. It's decal time. Uh, apologies if you're picking me phone up vibrating. Uh, Sorry about that. There you go. Let's put some decal solution down. And I like to label me models. I, I make my own decals and plaques and things like that. So it just, because obviously this is going back to the guys at eModels, to their display unit at their, at their shop. Uh, so yeah, it just lets people see what the build is. So I like to just put on there what it is just a little bit of description just my way of doing it so we'll just slide that on now simple text ball tank with winter ski that's all it needs because that's what the build is nothing fancy just description pull that straight out of there and then i'll just brush that in place like so Carry on working me way around. I'm doing all of these. Just like that. And then start doing the side one. we 
wet that, put that in place, go around it with a bit of decal, a decal uh, solution. The water run on it and then you're just letting the uh, water activate the decal and then i can apply that and these i printed on me printer uh, standard uh, decal paper on an inkjet printer and then i give it a coat of plastic coat clear sealer and it's the gloss clear sealer that i coat them with do that whilst they're on the paper and then you cut round it with a pair of scissors nice and tight to the design Leave it for 24 hours. Mr. Mountain's messaging me again. I'm going to shoot him. Uh, there you go. And you, you basically let the decals dry for 24 hours. And then you can apply the decal just like so. There you go. Lovely jubbly. So that's two of the decals on. Then we'll do the other side. Like that. Same decal. Uh, built for e models 2021 by me. So we'll let that uh, do its thing. Uh, couple of more decals to apply and then we'll be getting close to the reveal folks so looking forward to it yeah. let that dry let it get wet even cold there you go put the decal solution on and then pop that straight on there like that Whiz. Just like that. Get in there. Flick that edge over with me knife of goodness. Just like that. And then brush over the decal. Just getting the air bubbles out. And yeah, look, it's even got sprue on it. See? I'm good, ain't I? Bad. And then we'll have a decal for the back. And yes, folks, you've guessed it. We'll have that on there, just like that. Let the water do its thing. Nice little soaker rune. Bit of water on the surface there, just to make it slide a bit better. That's the last decal then, folks. Look at that. Lovely. Let's persuade that to comply. Get it nice and as central as possible. Whop the paper straight out. There you go. That's the 67's workshop. Yes, folks, that's me. Yeah. Just finishes it off. I always put my name at the back because, you know, the date. But uh, all in all, that's, I think, a nice, nice little simple diorama there. It does what it says on the tin. Uh, I'm going to let this all dry now. So whilst I'm uh, just brushing round, don't forget, folks, pop over and see the lovely people at eModels. Um, bear in mind, obviously, with the global situation, things are slightly delayed, but they are getting back to normal. Have a browse on the website. Treat yourself. Um, have a look through uh, the other builders' work as well on the eModels channel to share the love. I'll be joining you for my next build shortly, so I'll do a speed build there on the Honda CBR Fireblade. So that's coming up uh, imminently. I'm going to leave that to do its thing and dry. And we'll wrap up the episode now with a nice, simple 
little bit of music and a reveal video for you folks i hope you've enjoyed the build i've thoroughly enjoyed it thank you for watching bye bye for now